Hi, this is Peter Dart's Clairvoyant. Um, I'm not any... <coughs> excuse me, my cough. I'm getting a bit of a cold at the moment. Uh, I'm not here to do any readings today. I'm doing one of my topical videos. And and I was going to do one, something to do with things that are going wrong in life. But I thought, no, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do something else, which I think could be quite good for a few people um, that I know who sort of follow me. Won't be for everybody. But I think this could be something good. Um, so, uh, and I want to talk about business. So, I just get the think now, as if to say, you know, sometimes we, we have an idea and we don't quite know how to sort of motivate ourselves to sort of do it. Or sometimes we think, oh, we haven't got the money uh, to do these things. Um, so, I'm a big believer sometimes it isn't always about having loads of money around you. It's sometimes about having the passion and the will to get out there and make these things happen. So it's like you just need your drive and your ambition. So in other words, you can either do it on the side and build it up slowly like a hobby. And that would be quite good. But I just feel so in this day and age now, most businesses now uh, are all connected online. So you need a really big online presence. So you need to focus on Facebook, maybe Instagram, Twitter. Um, or, you know, the obvious like Snapchat, but y you'll find as you start to focus on some of these mediums that not everyone suits you. And also you've got the different platforms and they've got sort of different demographics, in other words, different age groups. So this is something you've got to figure out. And I don't know all the demographics because I haven't focused on them all. I mean, I've just started on Snapchat a little bit, but I think they're more a younger generation. Um, but who knows, it, it could work for me. Um, but most of my work now comes through Facebook and Instagram, you know, I've had the odd inquiry, but nothing major. But then saying that, I haven't got a big following on it yet. I'm building it up. So don't be disappointed if it doesn't work. You know, it's like I could perhaps get 10 bookings a week. And, you know, and I've got 10,000 people following me um, on um, Facebook. So, you know, it's probably in less than 1%. Uh, you know the people that I connect with um, so it, it's it's interesting so don't disappoint it if you don't suddenly get that interaction that you're looking for straight away but you know you need to be on there but now I just feel so it's about having your plan together your business plan figuring out where you're going to get your customers what you're going to offer them what you're going to charge um, are you willing to get any offers out there and that the, how you're going to promote it and the, you know facebook now is brilliant now with the live feed and everything you can promote yourself on there even if you're not selling a service you could be showing people around what you're doing how you're doing it there's always some kind of interaction because it's all about gen not sometimes about getting work from facebook but generating interest and when people are interested they talk and chat um so i feel so these are the things you've got to look at but I feel like now it's about self-confidence now, believing in yourself and taking that real leap of faith and getting out there and sort of moving from that work side of your thoughts and ideas, moving into that business sort of ideas and thoughts. And it can be a really big transition. And then also the other worry is sometimes, well, you know, is the money can come in. So we worry, are we going to get paid and are we going to be able to live? So, you know, there's there's lots of, you know, negatives to it, working for yourself. But there's also lots of positives because I call it financial freedom. In other words, depending on how hard you work, how much work you get coming in, how much money you get coming in. You know, but it isn't always as simple as that. I know, but, you know, I'm so pro-business that I am working for somebody because I always, this is the way I look at it. If something goes wrong in a job, what can you do? Nothing. You, you're fired. You're gone. But if you're working for yourself, you can cut costs. You can do offers. You can go out and find more customers. So you can adapt and change as you go on or, or do a complete new service. You know, so there's, there's different things that you can do to attract new things in. But when you're working for somebody, if you're made redundant, you're made redundant, I suppose. And that's that. You know, no offence to the people who are out there working for somebody, you know, because it's not for everybody. 
but maybe for those who do like to keep your jobs, you know, in, in just security, you know, that money's coming in every day, every week, that's great. I'm not knocking it. You know, it has got its benefits. Um, but maybe perhaps you could come up with an idea where you could just do it as a little hobby on the side. You know, so there's all these wonderful things that you could be doing. And maybe a lot of you have had ideas, but you just don't quite dare do it. You've just got to take that leap of faith now and believe in yourself. And this is what it's all about. And maybe when you're promoting yourself on Facebook, it's to do pictures of everything that you're doing and do competitions and get people to share it. You can win this, win that, or I'll offer this and I'll offer that. You know, it's all about getting yourself out there. I mean, it's taken me, what, a good 10 years to build up my Facebook profile. And it's really grown over the last two or three years. It's like the momentum's really grown. And do bear in mind, sometimes the universe just comes in and says, hey, you're not doing it like this now. You're not doing that. You know, it, you've got to be doing it this way. So in other words, they will mix things up a little bit for you. So to say, you know, things change. Or anything goes wrong, don't look at it too negatively. Look at it as if to say, well, maybe I was meant to look at this in a different way and I've got to adapt and change. You know, business is a constant cycle of changes. So don't give up on those thoughts and ideas. And then as you do that, you'll start to get out there. But I feel the main thing now is about confidence to connect out there with different people, your thoughts and your ideas, and trying to attract them to you. And price-wise, it's always about sort of not being too cheap, not being too dear, but somewhere in the middle. And also thinking about your own self-worth. And then sometimes we offer services as well. And you've got to start saying to yourself, is that service worth it? Are you getting your just deserves out of it? Is it? Are you getting value for money for yourself? And what I mean by that is, it's a bit like saying... Like for me, let's say, for example, when I go to somebody's house and do a reading, I say I charge £30. Um, but it's not just me going there and doing that reading. I've got to get in my car and I've got to travel from A to B. But it's not just me fuel. It's me insurance. It's me tax. It's me tyres. It's when my car breaks down. And then coming back home. You know, so it's not just sit there in front of somebody up to an hour. You know, it could be a total of two hours or three hours, depending where I'm going. So, you know, it's like, this is why a lot of readers don't do travelling. They make you come to you because they're not daft, they're not stupid. It's like, because time is money. So let's just say if I've got an hour to get an hour to get back, it's three hours in total. So I haven't earned £30 an hour, I've earned £10 an hour. I could go and earn £10 an hour working for Tesco. So people think sometimes you're earning loads of money, but you're not because it's all the hidden costs and the, 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 the other things that take up time. So you might see this amount of money here, but there's this here that's got to be spent to make it happen. And that doesn't always get calculated into it. It's like me when I do an event. I've got to pay for me A-boards. I've got to pay for me posters. I've got to pay for the marketing. I've got to pay for the venue. I've got to pay for the company to book in the venue. And then there's the me travel to get there. And me travel get back home. And then there's the time travelling there. That could be an hour there and an hour back. Then there's the cost of running the car, the maintenance. Mm. There's so many variables that come into it. That it's not just turn up there, oh, and I've made X, Y, Z. So all these things will come in for you about your costs and what you've got to do. And you may have a shop or a premises and you've got to pay for that. So there's all these different things that have got to be calculated in. So it's not simple. It's not straightforward. But hopefully you can make it all pay for yourself no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing something spiritual, healing or other business thoughts and ideas. So you've got to look at the hidden things that don't always stand out and what you've got to look at. But it's all there for you. But once you've got the formula right, it should work. And maybe you've got to say to yourself, well, I'll do it this way now. And then, oh, 
I didn't think of that. And then you've got to adjust it as you go along. So don't think you can't change or do it slightly different. You know, adapt to change because if you stand still and you keep doing it the wrong way, then all you can do is go bust. Sometimes we think, I've got to do it this way for that person because I've got to think of them, you know, because I want to trap them to me. Yeah, that's great and it's nice. But sometimes you're bearing costs that they don't see and everybody wants a bargain, don't get me wrong, but it isn't always pain for you. You know, it's like sometimes I do my office like the £10 readings and it's great and, you know, and I'll say, right, I'll travel sometimes. But then that travel could be three hours. What have I made? Three pound an hour? It's like, is it worth it? But sometimes you don't mind doing it. It gets the interest going, gets people thinking about you, gets people talking about you, and it can be good. But you've got to think why you're doing it and is it worth it in the long run. So these are the things you've got to think about. So I hope you've got something out of that. I hope that's kind of made sense to you. And if you've got any questions you want to ask to me, please do comment below. Okay, and next time we'll talk about something a bit more topical about life, not so much about business.